Oh. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, thanks, Michael. Perfect. How are y'all doing? Good, Michael. How are you? Doing all right. Doing all right. Just another day, you know? <laughs> so, Michael, I was going to ask you, um, you know, obviously some uh, key losses from last year uh, without uh, DJ, Tyler, uh, Jermaine. Uh, do you feel that, you know, this defensive line really has to keep business as usual, not really try to reinvent the wheel from last year? Or do you feel like the different personnel, new faces uh, really require some kind of uh, change in approach in 2022? Yeah, honestly, I'm confident in the guys that we have here. Um, you know, obviously those guys are on to bigger and better things and I wish everybody the best. Um, but I think Coach Rod, as I've stated, you know, in previous interviews, Coach Rod does a really phenomenal job with coaching everybody. And it's just the next person up and it's the next guy up when you're on the field, you're a starter, just like Herm says. So um, I'm, I'm confident in the guys that we have, and I know we can um, accomplish what we need to um, this year. And so I think it'll be a good year. Michael, Chris Carmen, what, um, what do you think will be different if anything about the defense this year, as you kind of evolve what you're doing with from Donnie Henderson and him putting his, uh, own impression on, onto the defense. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, just just because we only had a couple weeks of spring ball um, and kind of feel everything out. You know, generally everything's pretty much very similar um, as far as the the scheme and schematics. It's more so the people that are playing the positions, right? It's getting used to new players, right? You know, some of the other guys are gone. They're um, NFL and so on and so forth. So now it's more so just changing out the pieces and not actually changing the scheme per se. Um, so it's more so establishing a relationship with the guys you're playing next to, um, and building that trust up again. And not that we didn't have trust, but it's, you know, when you're playing with new guys, you kind of have to learn to play with, you know, um, new people. And so, uh, that's really what it is. It's not, not more of the, a change in the defense, I should say. And what about your role within sort of, the expediting newcomers and getting everybody kind of operating at the level that you want. Yeah. I think as a, you know, I guess as a veteran, as they call it, um, as an older guy on the team and a lot of the veterans that are here as well. Um, it's our job to instill where we're trying to go this year. Right. And not only that, but to allow for the new guys to buy in, to learn these good habits that we've started. And not only that, but grow and help us, right? Because everybody that's came in um, in the past year, they're here to help us win. And so um, it's their job to know that. And it's their, and it's our job to hold them up to the standard that we've set so far. Um, sorry, Michael, when, when you talk about uh, holding players to standard, um, I'm hearing a lot, um, you know, I just talked to Coach uh, Connolly a, a couple of weeks ago and also some other players uh, that we talked to in the last few weeks that they talk about the chemistry, the cohesiveness of this team being even a higher level than, than it was last year. Um, is that the vibe you're getting too? And can you put your finger on why there is that different vibe compared to 2021? Yeah, everybody has a chip on their shoulder. Um, we were third in the Pac-12 last year. And I think this team is tired of being third in the Pac-12. So if, if, you know, if that's me, that's why I have a chip on my shoulder as well. Um, and we lost a couple key games and we don't want to do that again. And so the new, the, the guys that are coming in, um, they're only going to help us. They're not going to hurt us. And um, I would say, yes, this team is a lot close. This is probably the closest team that I've seen. I mean, I've been here for, this is going to be my fifth year. This is probably the closest team I've seen in the past five years. And um yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited. How much of that is um, leadership driven? And uh, who would you say are the, the guys that are offense, defense, whatever, just sort of uh, the spearheading that whole thing? I, it's, it's a double edged sword, right? It's not just leader. It's not just the guys that are in leadership positions. It's the guys that are also following, right? Because they have to accept their role as well. Um, I can only do so, you know, in, in a D line room, I can only say so much, but if people don't want to follow what I say, nothing's going to happen. Right. So it's really a collective of the team that just decided to say, Hey, let's stop messing around and let's go try to win a Rose Bowl. You feel that maybe the interior of the line has more to prove or maybe has more question marks, I guess, compared to the two ends. Are you referring to defensive line or defensive, no defensive line? Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, realistically, I think 
the guys that are playing interior, right? You have Omar, Nesta, TJ. Um, these are guys that have taken snaps. They might not have been a starter, um, and there's some good guys ahead of them, but it doesn't mean that they're any less of a player than the guys that were before them. Um, I just think they just haven't had their opportunity to shine. After all, you know, I, I played here for two, almost two and a half years, and I didn't have my opportunity until a couple of years ago. Um, so it's really just an opportunity to go out there and shine. I don't think it's a lapse in um, technique or talent or ability. I just think it's it's just their time now, and they're going to get an opportunity they haven't had before. And um, uh, and I, I'm with them. I, I, they got my back, and I got theirs. What's your sense of the depth of your group? Because it seems like athletically, at least. Joe Moore, Garen, BJ, they don't really take a back seat to the starters in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I think you guys have seen ever since Coach Rod has stepped in um, as our D-line coach, uh, he's willing to play everybody. And Herm is the same way. Uh, when I first got here, there was, what, eight of the 11 starters were true freshmen. They're not afraid to play young kids. As If, if you can go out there and ball, go ball, right? And you, it, when you're – like Herm says, when you're out there, you're a starter. Um, so having a rotation – keeps people fresh, right? I, nobody, nobody, no one person needs to be taking 50 snaps a game because then when you get to December, you can't play in the Rose Bowl. So what's the point, right? People are just getting hurt. We have all these guys on the roster anyway, and they can all play. So why not play? And, and what's your sense of, of how some of those guys are coming along? The guys who were freshmen last year and really sort of, you know, got their feet wet. Yeah, I think, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. Um, that first year playing on the field, it's always a bit nervous, right? You get to play in front of a big crowd, travel around. You're playing college football, right? Some of these guys are 25 years old and have kids at home, so it's a little different game, right? Um, but I do think that they're got, these guys are coming along. They're doing fantastic work. They, everybody had a really good spring. Um, I'm really proud of these young guys, and now it's just holding them up to the standard throughout the season, not just for the first couple games. It seems like going into the season, there's maybe – uh, more uncertainty, I would say, in the secondary, probably more safety than cornerback compared to the defensive line, compared to the linebackers. Do you think that kind of materialized during spring practice and coming out of spring practice, you know, as a leader that looks at the entire defense, do you feel that, I mean, there are some more areas that might be stronger on this team than others on this side of the ball? I mean, you can, you can always say that, right? It's easy to, it, sometimes it's easy to point the finger and say some groups are better than the other, but as a collective, if one group fails, the whole group fails. So, uh, realistically, I don't think anybody is less important than anybody else or less athletic or talented. Um, I think it's important for people to accept their roles and play them to the best of their ability. I don't think there's any lapse of talent or performance, I should say. Um, it's just putting the people in the right spots and, allow, and allowing them to make a play. When you're several years into working with someone like Rodriguez, what's the difference at that point versus a year ago, two years ago? in terms of what you guys are working on, the sort of advanced skill levels and what that might lead to on the field? Yeah, I think it, now, it's up to, it, now it's gotten to a point where it's perfection, right? First couple, first year, maybe year and a half that he was here, let's, you know, maybe exclude COVID year, right? Because that was kind of a mess, but um, it's learning the technique, right? It's getting, getting the hang of working with each other, learning the, the vocabulary, right? Learning... Um, how he wants to coach his style and our style of play, right? And matching that correctly now. Now that we've been here for a couple of years, you know, we've gotten some time under our belt. We got a lot of snaps under our belt. So now it's perfecting our craft um, and it's being a master every play. Anything in particular that you think from a skill standpoint, you're, you've made some strides in that will show up on the field this year? Yeah, um, I think as a group collectively, um, it, a lot of it revolved around stopping the run, right? That was a lot of what AP talked about. It's a lot what Donnie's going to talk about. We got to stop the run. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to say, you know, as a group, our run game defense is definitely a lot better than it was before. Um, so I'm happy about that. And now we just get to have some fun and go pass rush. So that's really what we're going to refine uh, as we go along throughout the season. So you talk about stopping the run. Obviously, it seems almost like a brand new uh, group of running backs to, to some extent. Uh, what were your impressions of them in spring practice as you were go, going up against them every day? Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. These guys got some, they, they brought some juice. Um, I'm really, 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 really excited. You know, we've got Tevin coming in, X coming in, uh, Danny's back and he's looking strong. I mean, it's going to come to a point now. It's just like the defensive line, right? You're going to, you're going to be able to get to rotate somebody in and it's not like you're taking 
you're not taking Danny uh, Nagata out and putting X in and acting like it's a one and a two and a three, right? You're putting a starter in each time. They, both of those guys, all three of those guys can go anywhere and start. And yet we have them all on the same team. So there, there's no, there's no lapse in skill gap, right? Uh, or lapse in skill, I should say. Um, and that's phenomenal, right? Now you can rotate these guys in, you have less injury, you have guys that aren't taking as many hits and it, I think it's going to be great. Do you sense that the, the team uh, sort of feels some of the external stuff, uh, questions around Herm or the NCAA investigation or with how much sort of influx or, you know, lead departures that they've been with transfers or any, has any of that stuff had any impact or how do you guys discuss those things? No, we're, we're, we're just getting ready for fall camp. Realistically, we can't control any of that. That's all external stuff. There's no reason to focus on it anyway. Mike, so a video dropped a few days ago of yeah. you emulating a certain Broncos quarterback. So I wanted to ask if you see yourself as the Russell Wilson of this team. Oh, God, no. No, I don't make enough money to do that. Uh, it was just funny. You know, it was kind of in the moment and uh, just having a little fun, you know. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.